everybody, we are Southern California based band The Last Days of War. This is The Last Days of Warcast. I'm Mark. Danny. Beats and Beats. Beats Rob once again could not be here this week, gentlemen. It's been on for a while, dude. Where Rob go? Where did Rob go, dude? It's first, first some dude Johnny Chico shows up and then now he's gone. Yeah. To Rob. To Cheers. Rob. <laughs> first on the agenda, shots, boys. Maybe he'll come back to us. It's not like we could fucking lose him. Bro, you almost made me spit that out. <laughs> when, you, when you started laughing. Oh, fuck. Oh, man. Yeah, dude. Um, so we got we got one more week? We have this coming Friday. We will be playing. One more rehearsal? Saturday? Friday. Saturday, I'm sorry. Do we have another rehearsal between then and now and now and then? And no. Okay, we're good. Yeah. Oh, we're, we're good. good. Yeah. We're good. Did you just we're catch good. on there? We're good. <laughs> we're good. We're good. <laughs> November 25th, folks, we will be playing uh, Rancho Cucamonga, California. Rancho Cucamonga, California. There we go. That's how you say it. <laughs> uh, Saturday night, November 25th. If you're going to be in town, around town, if you want to fly in, fucking get airdropped. I'm whatever. excited. I'm fucking stoked, man. You know what's um, really cool about this one, too? Rob will be there. <laughs> That's going to be amazing. <laughs> it's always good when Rob's there. It's always, sometimes. Yeah. All the time. Uh, we're not doing audio. Oh, yeah. So all we're going to do is show and play. Yeah, so for our, our first show, Danny ran audio, and uh, it was quite the day, bro. It was, it a, was long a long day. day. It's a long day. It's a lot to set up and stuff. So anyways, this this one, we're just, uh, I'm just, setting, we're just up. setting up and playing, and then we're going to chill. Okay, hanging and banging. Hanging out. Finally yeah. get to drink that beer then. I know. I'm going to yeah. have two. Two beers, bro? Two. I'm going to have two. And maybe a Dr. Pepper. Is that? Damn. In, in Rob's, Rob's honor. Rob. <sighs> I don't know why he cheers them again. Anyway. I don't know. We can just. Yeah, know? man. Danny, <laughs> give a very interesting story here that we're going to talk about. <sighs> oh, by the way, if it's a story I'm thinking of. It's not that new, but we're still going to talk about it because it's an amazing story. Because I, yeah. I, I've, I've read some of the back of it. Well, and it's it's wild too because it kind of goes into this this area of like just animals and like what the hell is happening? What is that, right? So this is a kind of pretty rough story. Okay. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna tell it like I'm gonna tell it to Josh because I don't think he knows it at all. No, but do I it don't. as okay. Do it as Johnny Chico though. Jo- no, <laughs> Johnny Chico. Um, elephant kills a woman goes to her funeral stomps her dead body calls other elephants they walk 12 hours to whatever place where whatever and it killed a bunch of people in the village and her family and they killed her goats Specifically, the story says it killed Elephant. her goats. Elephants were just out to get it, dude. With katanas, bro. Fuck. <laughs> so this is like that Orca movie? Free okay. Willy? Okay, yeah, well, no. <laughs> <laughs> but no. like, I just, it's, it's one of those things when I hear that, I'm just like, okay, so you're telling me that you pissed off an elephant and it stomped on you. And then it came to your funeral and stomped on you. And then it went to your, like, village and stomped on your village and killed people. And I don't know if it, like, killed her, their family and shit. But, like, I know it specifically said it, like, killed her goats. Who the hell taught this elephant Google Maps? Dude, elephants have great memories. I get the memory well, thing, but how that, did but it... This, this, I think this goes beyond just, like, like, an elephant maybe, like, recognizing a person or something. This is like holy shit, like. Not only are you dead, I'm gonna stomp on your ass. Then I'm gonna bro. wreck your house Heady and kill your goats. Fuck. Bro, I'd be pissed if they stomped on dead me, dude. You know what I mean? Dare <laughs> like, you. what the fuck, dude? How dare you stomp on ghost dead me? Would be like, the fuck. <laughs> fuck elephant. What did the elephant not do when it killed her that I needed to stomp on her too? It'd be funny if like the elephant took her wallet. Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> Give me that jewelry, bitch. Man, what do you do to piss off an elephant that bad? Bro. Like, what could you do? Like, steal its peanut or something? Like, <laughs> I was sure where you were going One with that. peanut? <laughs> it's like, you see, like, Dumbo, right? And, like, they eat the peanut, you know? 
He keeps, you he keeps saying he keeps saying one peanut. Peanut. Plural. Peanuts. Peanuts. <laughs> Whatever. I thought Dumbo only got one peanut. Did he? In the cartoon, it was always going for the one peanut. (laughs) I'm sorry. (laughs) It's my childhood, man. It's my childhood, man. It's my childhood right there. Man. (laughs) We're going to be doing our jobs if we weren't earning our childhoods. You know what I mean? (laughs) That's a slippery slope there. Very much so. (laughs) Dude. Like, the fact that, like, it wasn't, like, okay, so I get, like, that one elephant had beef with the lady, right? No, nah, homeboy called and his friends. Yeah, they like, came. he... They can't, they, like, let's How did roll. this elephant tell these other elephants the story? You know, <laughs> like, hey, man, you're not gonna believe this shit. She fucked my shit up. She's keyed my car. Whatever the fuck. You don't remember Jungle Book? Yes. They all have meetings. They talk. That's true, they do. Yeah. Uh, that's wild, man. I mean, I've, I've heard uh, elephants... <clears throat> like coming to villages and and killing people, and I mean I've heard stories of them specifically like in a pretty brutal way killing people, you know. But this story is like that's that's not just some elephants We're, coming onto some village that's that they've come across and something happened, right? And they're you're irritated. This is like dang, like yeah. you called your friends, dude. Called them up. Yeah, you. Yeah, I think uh, chimps are the same way. Yeah, chimps get fucking crazy. Well, I know there's some animals that communicate. Like <laughs> my brain, like just thinking of these elephants marching along, trying to go stomp the shit out of them. I'm, my brain went to the Robin Hood cartoon <laughs> <laughs> where they're all running like, through and then the one bird. The... Yeah, that my brain just played that scene all over again. That Robin Hood movie is really good. It's one of my favorite ones from childhood. Which one? Good one. The, the Robin cartoon? Hood cartoon? The Disney one? The Disney yeah. one? So the, I always like the lion dude with the crown that kind of was like too big. Yeah. You know, the, snake, King, the little snake King, thing. King Louis? Yeah. Was it King Louis? It's Prince John. Was it Prince John? Okay. It was I was Prince like, King Louis. John. King Louis in the uh, jungle. King Richard. Jungle Richard. King Richard. So, the yeah. Lionheart. He's uh, the orangutan in Jungle Disney. Book. Disney. Yeah. <laughs> I just got a mind blank. Crows, bro. I heard that they'll remember and like continuously shit on your car. I <laughs> like for real. I seen a thing where uh, some woman she had dogs and these these crows were coming onto her property and like they had like a friendship with the crows. Like and they like came back every day and they played with the dogs and shit. Like there's something going on with crows, man. Just picture a fucking crow like throwing a ball for the dog. <laughs> Like, let's get down. Yeah. There's that one TikTok video. I don't know if it's a crow or a different bird where a guy has trained it to go pick up stray money from strangers on the street and he flies back into his apartment and he has a drawer and it's just filled with different types of money. I don't know if this bird's flying over and stealing money from people, but he comes back in the window and he's Hey, got- you asking questions, right? I mean, the bird's bringing you money, right? The bird's like, I didn't do nothing. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't see nothing. You see fucking... Squawk. 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 He's, he's coming in the window with a 20, man. I mean, shit. <laughs> you didn't see. Squick. Dude, if you could train a bird to go grab something randomly and bring it back to you, what would it be? Money. <laughs> that sounds like the proper use of a fucking... I'm not going to yeah. I'm not going to tell you, like, ketchup packets or some shit. <laughs> like bird's getting some fucking money. Fucking ranch. Fucking <laughs> ranch dressings. Dropping them off at fucking. What, what, what do you. Uh, money would really be the only answer because, I mean, other than that, a sack. But, I mean, if you got money, then you can get that delivered. <laughs> still so, have a trade. Imagine bird, you're just chilling, dude, and some fucking crow somebody's weed. just grabs your sack. <laughs> <laughs> just the fly fuck? Up. You're all like lighter in the pipe. Like, <laughs> no, but like your nut sack. Oh, wrong sack. <laughs> I was talking about like your, know, like your weed. I know what you're talking about. <laughs> I was talking about nut sacks. If. If the bird grabs your nutsack and flies away, where are you? Still standing there as like your testicles going with it? <laughs> that sounds awful. What do you got a pterodactyl coming after your nutsack or what? Bro. I don't know. I think that would suck, dude. I'd punch a crow, dude. I'd punch a crow. I shot a crow once with a BB gun. Sucked, man. Allegedly. Okay, so so 
But Buddy had a BB gun, and it was far away, and I didn't think I was going to hit it, and I hit it, and when I hit it, I felt bad. We were kids, dude, and I felt bad. I, I, have, a, I have a story just like that. Yeah. Where they did, like, a wild shot with something, and they didn't think it was going to hit, and it hit, and they, everybody felt bad. Yeah. It was, uh, yeah, it's my, one of those, my like, My uncle used to have oh, uh, no. a blow dart gun. Why did they do that? <laughs> Yeah. But, and, and there was a fucking sparrow chilling in there. It was the same. It like, was there's in the no garage, way. Dude. There's like, no right? way. Yeah. And all the way on the other side of the room, and he just goes, like, yeah. joking. Little me was so Little devastated. Little bird just hits the floor. So fucking sad, yeah. dude. All of us instantly, like, regretted. Like, let's just call it a day, dude. We all went to bed. It was, like, 2.30. I was bummed out. You know? I was like, <laughs> I always kind of hope, like, I, I kind of just, we left, but I kind of hope, like, like a minute later, that bird was like, yeah. oh. Like, By the way, we don't condone hurting animals. These no. are just childhood stories that, that was it happened. <laughs> I was know? a kid at the ripe age of 32. <laughs> I was no. in my 20s. <laughs> I was in my 20s. Well into my 20s. The I mean, person I was, who did it wasn't wasn't me, by the way. It's a, it, was, it was a friend. It was somebody else. It was a friend that did it. <clears throat> Holy yeah. shit. Um, <laughs> did you want to talk... Uh, Spirit Box? Yeah, dude. So I hear they uh, nominated for a uh, Grammy for Best Metal Performance. That's dope. Good for, good for them. Yeah, I think they're it's fucking cool. fucking killing it right now. Because, like, I think the list of names is, like, Metallica and Ghost. And there's another, there's a couple others. But they're in that lineup. And, you know, I mean, it's a band that just kind of popped up and did really well. And it's kind of cool. Yeah. Kind of cool to see that, you know? Was it you, Josh, that sent me that interview of her talking about the the songs and the album being connected? The meaning behind the yeah, album. Yeah, the meaning behind the album. It was a really great interview out that Josh sent me. Okay. Where she was talking about, like, uh, if there was any... Somebody had asked her if there was any connections with the songs. Between the songs. And that they kind of wrote a concept album without saying it was a concept album because they wanted to see if people would pick up yeah. on the links to from each song in and out. Apparently there's, like... Similarities in structure and certain lyrics and things and that that go on through through the whole album. Okay, so I think that that's really cool. Um, but it, it, it was it released initially as a whole album, or is it are these some of the songs they waterfalled out? No, it's their newest album. That okay, they so the, you're talking. Okay, yeah, that's new, cool. Yeah, I was gonna say because that might even be cooler if there were songs. Imagine right, yeah. imagine being a band and you waterfall out a bunch of songs like that, and your fans catch on to that. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Yeah, but good for them i think that i don't know really like how you guys feel about like the grammys anymore mm -hmm. some of these award shows and stuff the way it is like it would be cool if they won but i don't honestly think they will yeah who, who do you think oh, uh we'll probably still go to metallica yeah i was gonna say it's probably the more commercially if safe you had a award. newer like if there was a category just for Newer metal performance that yeah. they probably win, but well, if you're like, dumping them all in together, and it's one of those things. Like I don't, I don't think Metallica is not deserving of it, but how many times is Metallica going to win? Yeah, that's yeah, honored for that. So I feel like it would be a really cool opportunity to like for the Grammys to like actually honor like a band that's like coming up and new and like yeah. I feel like I feel like they don't do that. It's it's kind of the same lineup of artists. That I think it'd be kind of cool if they capped it after like a certain tenure of how long you've been around you know like hey man you've you've won plenty of these you know don't come back well i mean i i mean i guess we get I guess, it you're metallica here i guess where where i might like disagree with that to some extent i feel like if it's deserving then right like i, I feel, feel that, like man. i feel like this is a situation where bands like that that have had a lot of success and recognition I feel like it's like I feel like it should be understandable for them to just bow out and and we're giving it to these guys because these guys are knocking it out the fucking park, you yeah. know. Um, but then again, I don't think Mount Metallica should not be celebrated and honored for the work they do do, right? He said do do. I know. <laughs> not don't do. <laughs> fucking uh, do do. Yeah, man. Fucking fuck Metallica, dude. Fucking. <laughs> <laughs> That's not what I'm saying. Good for them for being nominated, and if they win, yeah, that's cool and all. But it's just it's one of those things to see to see Spirit Box grab that would be really cool. You know, another Grammy that caught my attention was uh, Jelly Roll at the age of like 43 or 44. good for that dude. Yeah, be being best artist, new artist, best new artist, dude. Right. Chase your fucking dreams. 
fucking serious, man. Never stop because the people who make it are the ones that never fucking stopped. Right. Yep. So. Yeah, good for him, chase man. Chase your fucking dreams, man. That's awesome. Yeah. Good yeah. for him and good for them. I was going to say her, but it's a band. Spirit so. Box. <laughs> Spirit Box. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, I just, you know, it's one of those things that you see that. And then, you know, just some of these award shows sometimes, you know, with movies and stuff, you just, sometimes you see the winners and you're like, yeah, that's so predictable. You know, yeah, just kind of gets a little. Remember when, like, the MTV, MTV Awards, MTV, MTV, yeah, <laughs> sorry, the that MTV was... Awards. I couldn't fucking say it. Remember when they were like a fucking big thing? Yeah, like, yeah. yeah, it was like the a music, bigger it, deal. Did, they always do the at music. some point. It was like a bigger deal to win one of those. The Music Video Awards wasn't that mm-hmm. what it was? AVNs. Yeah, it's yeah. kind of hard though to do a Music Video Award when you don't really have a channel that shows music videos anymore. Videos, right? let alone even really much music. Like it was, it's so, it was, okay, let me say it like this. So bad, I was watching an episode of Ridiculous. Okay. And um, Chanel, West Coast, didn't know what MTV stood for. She had no idea that it meant music. That doesn't surprise me. Well, okay. I know, but like, right. I get it though, because of her age, there, right. there probably was never any But it's just MTV like, at them. what yeah. point do you just drop the music and call yourself TV? TV, <laughs> and then we have music TV that actually plays like music. Yeah. I mean, for a while they had MTV too, but I think even then they just got Not, all the yeah, reality but they, shows. yeah, exactly. That yeah. got dogpiled with reality shows, and now it's a lot of it. Like uh, I was watching social media, somebody had a video talking about like what does Rob Deerdick have on fucking MTV because yeah, he's I've on seen there that conspiracy. all the time. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like there's nothing else on that channel anymore. Rob and Big, know? yeah. So it's like, what what the fuck is going on with him to where he's just got that locked, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, good for him. Yeah. 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 Fucking, that dude's... And not only that, like, I I remember seeing an interview with him where he was talking about, like, where he started making the big money is when he started doing the the factory. Yeah, He started doing the factory because he started doing businesses on there. Well, he's like, I made a show... About making shows, about making making, making businesses. Yeah. So I was filming a show about me making businesses. So it was a business that started businesses, and it just he just came. Yeah, yeah, it's kind of crazy. Kind of, like, he's kind of like Shaq. Shaq fucking owns everything, dude. I think whatever Shaq doesn't own, Rob Deerdick has. They're, they're, that's, that's, that's it. it. It's just it's <laughs> the only two people. <laughs> it's only two people. Like dude. Elon in there somewhere, yeah. and I think uh, what's what's the Bezos dude? Bezos. Guy. Have you seen that clip with Shaq where he's DJing, DJ Diesel, and it's in the middle of a set. It's going to the buildup, and then all of a sudden, it cuts off. And then you hear his mic, sorry, I hit it with my dick. <laughs> <laughs> it goes right back into the... It goes right back I like the, the video where Shaq is is in the front, front row, row. or just banging. The right head. at the barricade, and he's banging to yeah. a metal band. That's and so you're good. just like, Shaq, dude, hell yeah. Yeah. Uh, fucking, what's his name? Aquaman was just mm. like in the pit at Metallica. Metallica yeah. He's just fucking, that's fucking cool shit too. Yeah. Stuff like that. When you get to see like big celebrities that yeah. probably can't do normal shit, do normal shit and just. Shaq, yeah. front row, metal show, headbanging makes my heart happy. Yeah, Wasn't dude. there a you know? Channing Tatum, Taylor Swift thing too as well, where he was a Swifty? I believe so. It was around was, the same time. Who was a Swifty? Channing Tatum, like he was at one of her concerts and he was dressed up as a Swifty. Oh, <laughs> is there a way to dress up as a Swifty? Do we, is there, the the is shirts. This, they no. all say like Swifty on him and and then they do like bracelet stuff where they make bracelets oh, for each other. Oh, because I knew that, but I wasn't sure like. Yeah. Yeah. No, this, this, this is just what she calls her so family. It's a, it's and they a, all wear a, like Taylor Swift shirt their merch and yeah. some. Some of the stuff is self-made, like their tribute to her. They made a shirt with her face on it or something. Yeah. yeah. Taylor Swift, dude, she's gonna be big one day, dude. <laughs> Fucking, I know it. I feel it. I see that. I see that video on TikTok where where a dude came out and was like, "That Taylor Swift's gonna be huge," you know, <laughs> hanging out with with uh, Kelsey, and then just <laughs> women are just like, "Motherfucker, <laughs> what the fuck are you saying?" It's Taylor Swift. It's like, it's funny. Yeah, yeah, dude. She's fucked. Oh, I I couldn't imagine that type of fame, bro. It's yeah, so it's, I think there's, I think, I don't know how you do it. I don't know. That's, I think I've said it before in the podcast, but to me, I feel like she's the closest thing I've seen to like a Michael Jackson fame since Michael Jackson. 
You know what I mean? Yeah. The way people used to freak out for him, they do for her. Yeah. I heard I heard something about that the fucking tour she did literally like stimulated the economy of the United States. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Like, yeah, dude. Jeez. Yeah. Yeah. And I gotta I gotta say you're pretty big if you're doing yeah. you know. She officially became a billionaire. Yeah. Yeah. I heard uh, something about making some laws where artists can't re-record their music now. Oh, because of what she did? Yeah, I heard that they were, the music industry was talking about trying to get some laws going on about stopping an artist from doing that. Like re-recording your, mu- your music out <laughs> under... Fuck them, dude. Oh, <laughs> like, I get it, like, I get it. Okay, yeah. so, like, so if somebody you, holds if, the rights and If then, you leave a label and you go to another label and you want to release... So you whether just it's a well, your of shit. The track. Yeah. there's yeah. it's something legal wise where like they own you they own the catalog for so many years, right? Mm-hmm. And then after it, it's kind of like dropping a copyright, like somebody else can pick it up if you don't renew it, your type deal thing. And she bought all of her old stuff and redid like her first couple of albums that I think she said she didn't make much money off of. Yeah, something like that. Yeah. Yeah. So she went and redid it, and it's like, oh, here's this album, The Taylor Way. And, like, this is how I would have done it if I wasn't being controlled by the record company. Um, so that's what she did there, is that she went back and she was like, you know, I didn't make money off it the first time. Here we fucking go. Yeah. You know? Good for her. Well, I think it's cool, though, because I've heard that there's there was a lot of support in that, mm-hmm. you know, which is cool. It's cool to be an artist that you could, like, actually do that and pull it off and spend the time and the money... To go re-record stuff and then, yeah, yeah. I cool. think it just speaks volumes, mm-hmm. you know, of the uh, caliber of artist. Yeah, she's you, all right. You Swifty? I'm not a uh, Swifty. Like I enjoy her music, but my my kids, my and my wife. I mean, all of them. Uh, she, she took my oldest daughter to go see Taylor Swift. That was her first like big concert, like not that long ago. Yeah, and then uh. <clears throat> then they did a movie about the fucking tour and then she, my wife got tickets to the movie for and her bought, and the kids. And you bought merch? And then they went there. At the concert? <laughs> yeah, right. Did they sell merch at the... At the fuck, dude. The, at the they theater? came back with like cups and popcorn buckets and posters Damn. and everything had Taylor on it, dude. Everything. It's Hannah Montana part two. Yeah, dude. Jeez, yeah. Yeah, she said it was just like a big concert. Everybody you was film just film your along. tour and then put it in a movie theater. Was it an IMAX? Film. I believe so. Yeah. yeah. But they, they went to the movie because my youngest daughter didn't get to go to the show. That makes so, sense. So they wanted her to like have the experience there in the theater, you know. That's cool. Oh, that's right, because you uh only one of your daughters went to that. Yeah, just my oldest, yeah. That's cool. Yeah. This, uh, yeah. Are you a Swifty? Um, I am not that familiar with uh her music other than the the amount of her music that you get bombarded by from not in 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 living a life that you don't live in the channels that like her music is played in yeah you still hear it so like I know of a few songs of hers uh, I couldn't I don't know all the names hit me with a couple lines go that it's more for me. <laughs> For me, it's more of I can hear. I have melodies. You have melodies. I'm yeah. a melody. I'm a melody. No, no, I'm good. <laughs> I'm good. <laughs> I'm gonna get in trouble. I'm not a Swifty. <laughs> I'm not a Swifty. It's funny because um, I was trying to think of a Taylor Swift song, and the only thing going through my head right now is like Avril Lavigne songs, dude. I can't, I can't get. Like, you got Avril Lavigne, and I got Kelly Clarkson. That's funny. <laughs> Since you've been gone, Kelly Clarkson. No. Okay. Came in like a red. That's uh, somebody else. That's Mighty Cyrus. Yeah, see. So there's there's that line that gets blurred for me because I, uh, you know, there's people in my life that listen to different genres of music, but, um, and I listen to a lot of different genres of music, but that is one genre of music that I don't normally traverse very yeah. often. So, like I said, I'm familiar with some of her music, but I'm not, uh, I couldn't tell you the names. For sure. How about yeah. you, Josh? I don't know one song. Love. Yeah. Um, I've got girls. My wife loves Taylor Swift, but we also have headphones. <laughs> <laughs> so when she's rocking it, all right, come on, guys, put that on. So I, I couldn't honestly say I know one song. Um, my wife told me like a lot of her older stuff 
when she used to write her own stuff and play guitar. Because I believe she didn't she do country for a yeah, while like before she She liked a lot of the older the pop, stuff yeah. versus the newer poppier stuff. So I guess the way she changed, I don't know, the material, so to speak. She likes the older stuff. Um as far as her take her home with me, but that's pretty much it. Oh Okay. All right. I, I couldn't name one song. I'm not a fan. Yeah. Like, I don't get why she makes that much money, but I mean, fuck it. <laughs> do whatever you got to do, man. I mean, obviously, obviously she puts shit. on a good show. Yeah, I mean, yeah. she's got people going to go see him from young kid age to older. Dude, there was man. there was some pretty cool elements from her show that I saw. That whole uh, part where she jumps down on the stage and then there's she like swims. Yes, she I swims. know what part you're talking about. I yeah. saw some videos of that. I was like, that's pretty cool. Um, I was involved with a project with a company that was looking into doing a effect like that for a movie that had a character that swims in water. And the idea was to do it in, in like a million dollars. And when companies came back with the proposal, it was like in more like in the $25 million range. <laughs> Jesus. And so it didn't happen. So watching, looking at that, watching it, I, when I saw the videos, I was like, oh shit, they, they did exactly what was wanting to do yep. over here. I wonder how much they did that for, you know, yeah. like I wonder. Yeah. Bro, she probably just fucking. Cost her three nights of shows. Right. <laughs> that's, yeah. that's it. I'm done. Her pocket change, dude. Yeah. Whatever. Crazy. Here you go. Yeah. yeah. Oh, man, what's the first thing you'd buy if you were that rich? I don't know, man. I, 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 think, I think I would buy a house that had a separate area for doing my stuff. Like, you, like a big-ass studio of your own right there? Yeah, like I have like a, either attached or detached area of the house that I have, like recording studio area. You know what I'm saying? Uh, yeah. Yeah. It'd probably be a house for me too. First, yeah, then that take care of the wife and kids like that. I go, I go travel, uh, travel. Yeah, yeah, man, uh, traveling. I don't think, dude, I've probably been to like Louisiana, Texas, Mexico. That's yeah. about it. Like, <laughs> I don't really, I don't travel very much. You travel? Did did you? Oh, you did when you were touring. <laughs> I said, this dude's like, yeah. I've been, I've been around a bit. I remember, dude. Traveling, but daddy, not right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'll, I'll be here for a little bit. You know. Yeah, uh, yeah, I did. I've done a fair bit of uh, traveling around the uh, United States and some other countries or stuff. Oh yeah, dude. Yeah, it's fun. Yeah. yeah, remind him again how much he loves airports. That's right. You said you fought someone there, right? Oh, man, that was on a flight. Uh, but that's <laughs> it. Wasn't no, it wasn't me. It was another guy that was on the crew on a tour that almost got into a fight on an airplane. But if it's, I can't talk about it. I can't say names and circumstances. It's not going to make sense and it'll be stupid. So I'm not going to. For sure. Yeah. yeah. I, I get what you're saying. Yeah. <laughs> yeah it, it, it won't make any sense. It'll be dumb. Yeah. But um, yeah, I, I toured with an artist for a long time where we did nothing but fly dates. So it's airport, lobby call, 4 a.m., airport. It's flight to New York for radio show in the morning, flight out from New York to Detroit for show at night. You didn't go. So I spent time in my life seeing three to four airports daily. And um, I'm flying, dude. Yeah, fuck that shit. I'm so terrified of flying, bro. I fucking hate it. I don't mind. Do you know what? For me, it's like, I think I told you this. For me, it's like this we pull up in a car. And then I want to just fast forward right to where I'm walking on the fucking plane. Yeah. So like all of that airport stuff, dude, I've just, I've done it. And I'm just, dude. Yeah. Yeah. That's got to suck, dude. Um, if, yeah. I'm, I'm, let's just say I was being paid, so it was okay. But Josh, before we take a break, what would you buy? Probably properties. Properties. Forget the house. I'll give my family property so then they can stay on their own fucking land. <laughs> But still be taken care of. So like, hey, you party up over do you, there. Do you, you have did. people living on your land right now? Not necessarily, no. But just because of multi-families in the household. Like, it yeah. would be nice to just have the peace and quiet. And then 
Like even my kids' age right now, if I could, I'd buy them their own fucking property. So today. your your idea, <laughs> your idea is like your idea is your house, right your now. Idea is your house not buy your own house, but buy everybody a house. So they'll get the hell out of yours. So then they won't come <laughs> to it. mine. He's like, I like my house. <laughs> like I'm okay with what I've got, and then having a property, then you do whatever the hell you want with it. You want a two story house, a big mansion? That's your business. Not That's your property. Yeah. But but do whatever you want. Other than that. I don't give a shit and don't worry about what I'm doing on my property. Do your own thing. Hell yeah, dude. It's the American dream. The American dream. Fucking fuck. Hoorah. USA, dude. Fuck it. <laughs> Get we'll my right family back. the fuck out of my house. <laughs> we'll be right back. What's up, guys? Danny and Mark from The Last Days of War. What's going on? Just wanted to remind you guys that you guys can follow us on all our social media pages. It's we the, got the TikTok and the Instagram and the... Uh, Facebook and threads. Yep. Those are all the last days of war. And X is last days of war because the is too long. Uh, check out our merch. That's a great way to support the band. It is in our bios on all of our social media pages. Anything else, Danny? Have a good one. Back to the show. And we're back. Yeah. Uh, what's first on the agenda here? Shots. Shots. Cheers. Cheers. Rob. Cheers. Rob. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, <clears throat> no. I'm telling you, dude. Not a good combo. Oh, that's horrible. Oh, yeah. And then give it a second. It gets worse. It does. It keeps getting worse. <laughs> it keeps it does. Worse. <laughs> Don't mix Jack Daniels and orange juice, and then chase it with orange juice and Sailor Jerry. Don't do that. Not Wait, a good you mix. went back for round two. Wait, what? No, or, uh, before him, the last time he had a Dr Pepper. Oh, okay. So you're as a chaser. Yeah. Okay. Correct. Correct. And this time I have that. Oh man. So hot takes. Hot takes. It's time for some fucking hot takes. I'll go um, first. So Danny bought a, a hot takes game, and we're just pulling out a card. Go round robin. We'll debate it real quick. Oh, we're going old school. Smoking inside should be allowed. When I grew up, they had a smoking and non-smoking section in a restaurant. So. Which is really funny, if you think about it. Doesn't worry, the smoke stays over there. <laughs> so, like, you could kind of tell where the parents... And the families sat, and then where there was the single people. But for my kids nowadays, like, they don't have that. It's not even an option. Like, yeah. most bars, you can't even smoke inside in a bar anymore. I don't think you can in California at all. At all. Definitely. Yeah. No. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I think maybe, I think, like, hookah lounges still... You can they they but, do because they have like that. a different license. Yeah, it's outside like cigar shops and stuff too, right? Yeah, but the, those, those are well, right? So like MTL was a cigar place, cigar lounge. Yeah, it was a bar lounge, but it's closed down now. But um, that's a good question. If so, I don't even know. If I don't like, know how they do that compared to bars and yeah, you know. I but mean, couldn't if in that case, couldn't bars just sell cigars and then go? I think. Yes and no. I think, uh, yes, it should be brought back indoors for 21 and over places, like a bar. What, smoking? Smoking thing? indoors? You think so? You're going to go to a fucking bar. What, are you there for your health? Right. Like, yeah. <laughs> you, know, like, you know what I mean? Like, as as like, a person who was raised on secondhand smoke, um, I'm fucking tired of that shit, man. I don't want to <laughs> fucking be anywhere around somebody smoking, dude. So, uh, you know what I'm saying? Cigarettes? No, I don't. I don't. I don't want it around me. I don't want to walk into a building where somebody's smoking. You smoke in your house? That's cool. You know, yeah. I'll chill when I'm done. I'll leave. I'm, I have, I'm mad about it, but I just don't want to be around it. You know. I think the only memory I have of like being like a kid and somebody smoking around me, like indoors and stuff. Honestly, I think it was my grandmother. Yeah. She just recently stopped smoking. She yeah. Did, yeah. I'll say it like this: You could go outside and smoke. I mean, like, you could go outside. Fuck, take your ass outside. <laughs> I mean, like, you can get outside. your fucking ass outside and go fucking smoke outside. I'll tell you that. I get that. I just feel like a bar, if you're going to tolerate it anywhere, excuse me. It would... No, I hear you. I understand that. I, and I think Sorry. I think that, uh, yeah, I think that bars that have that outdoor smoking area, I think that works out great. Yeah. 
you know, um, because then people could still. That's true. They're still lounging outside. Yeah, I feel like if you could accommodate it in that way, do it in that fucking way. Mm -hmm. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. Next hot (laughs) take. There we go. Oh, okay. So this is in reference to an airplane. The middle seat should get both armrests. When I sit in the middle seat in an airplane, and I'm not a small dude, so I do this, and I give the other people the armrests. No. For real? Oh, told, dude, I'm a big guy, man. I get it. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm not trying to be fucking, I'm not trying to be a big guy and a dick. Depending on the day. <laughs> <laughs> But you know what I'm saying? Like, like that's just that's just how it is. I was on a I was on a flight one time and I know we were flying into Memphis and I was in the middle seat and I get on the plane and I sit in the middle seat and there's two women that get walk up and they bought obviously the window in the aisle and left the person that was gonna be in the middle, kind of like next to two bigger women. Mm. But what they didn't know. Oh. <laughs> Here comes the big guy, right? So it was just one of those, like, the three of us kind of, like, we had this kind of, like, moment in this conversation where it was, like, we're all three just fat, and we're just going <laughs> to fucking deal with this, bro. You know what I'm saying? It was all just, like, we're going to touch each other. It's going to just get that way and we we took that flight man and we we had we had we had fucking... there was moments man where eyes locked and like there was there was there was you know it happened <laughs> I was trying to figure out way. Did you guys share seatbelts too? Did we get this? Job? Just fucking grab a roll and hold on, dude. Or what the fuck? We had the, the fucking the long, the one that makes it longer. We each had one and we tied them together into like little hearts and shit. No. Okay. Oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, it was good times. That's crazy, man. Uh-huh. Yeah, on a flight, Memphis, my ass in the middle, in the middle, and two large black women <coughs> on either side. <coughs> it was fun. It was a good flight. We got to know each other very well. Yeah, it was good. We had fun. We we uh, <laughs> wait, let's just, wait. Let's just say the three of us on that flight had a good time and enjoyed each other's. You company. made an Oreo cookie. Oh, you did, dude. Fucking oh shit! <laughs> That's the. It was the best Oreo cookie I ever Double had. Double stuff, nice. dude. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, Danny. I didn't Bowl. mean. <laughs> Double, Double stuff. stuff, dude. <laughs> you know, hey, yeah. hey, you know, it's how it goes. It's how it goes sometimes. You know, you had to. You had to just you had to just love someone in that situation. You know what I'm saying? There was no there was no getting around any of it. It was what it was, you know? It was it was gonna be hot, it was gonna be dirty. <laughs> we made it to Memphis. I think it was Dallas to Memphis. Uh, I don't we have any it. I don't have any better stories than that. So if that, <laughs> I if Josh wants to you're good, you're not gonna do one? I don't know one. No hot takes? Have you ever been on a plane where somebody lost it? Like, like legit, like legit lost it. started freaking legit out. Legit lost it. Like full on lost. I've it. only been on three plane rides. Yeah, I've, I've, I haven't been on many plane rides, bro. So I, I was on a plane where we had some turbulence, and it was. I mean, I gotta admit, man. I mean, I've been on some flights, dude, and this was like this is some turbulence. I get it, right? But like this, there was this woman, and she was on a flight with her husband and two kids, and this lady just she went for it. She just. You know what I'm saying? Not like, not like she started like crying and getting scared. Like she lost it, lost it. It's crazy. That's yeah, cool. that's, that's scary, dude. She just just in general. I think she was like, ah, uh, this is not okay, and I'm on a plane, and I'm fucking how many <coughs> feet above, and she just went into that mode, dude. And everybody was on the this plane was just kind of like Ooh, pre shit. or post 9/11. This is after. After? Wow. Yeah. Surprise. You're, this was several years is after. That this was like maybe like 2010, 2009, yeah. maybe 2010. Because I feel like they take down the crazies fairly quickly after 9-11. Well, <laughs> like know? I said, this this wasn't a woman that was like, she went crazy on the plane like she had like a box cutter. Like she just, she was like, like, I got to get off this plane. Like, holy shit. Did she go for like, the door? No, no, no. She didn't go for the door. Thank God. But like, you know, I mean, like 
it was one of those things like they had to come talk to her and stuff. Like you're kind of like sitting on a plane. Like, She's making a beeline for the door and you're what's stopping her? You close lining her? Well, see, I was in, I was in this Oreo cookie <laughs> double stuff situation at the moment. So I was, I was, in, I was incapacitated. Was, so I couldn't. It was all glazed up. I couldn't, the moment. <laughs> I couldn't stop her from getting to the door. Because I was in a, in a you Slippery know, situation. I, uh, you were the one cup. If you, so <laughs> if you will. If you will. <laughs> if you will. That's a, that is a good story. It is a good story, dude. Yeah, it's good. Yeah. Uh, so um, so we're not doing a third one? I'll do it. I'll okay. say, I don't know if we can top that, though. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> like I said, man, we had a moment. It was good. Ah. The youngest child is always the favorite. Yes. And my brother knows, dude. He knows, dude. Oh, oh fuck. Oh, I'm going to catch flack. I don't... That's hard, man. <clears throat> I got four boys, dude. And I just... I got two girls and a boy. And my boy's in the middle. But I, I could say that my girls, honestly, are a lot easier to deal with than my son. Yeah. Also, I feel like I've got it spaced out enough to where my my oldest is like at that age where it's like he's, you know, and then I've got one that's starting to really like get at that age where it's like, daddy, like, let's hang out and do things, you know, so kind of I've got a weird situation because I just I think I just got done with all of my kids being at like school at the same time almost Mm -hmm. as close as I think we're ever going to get to it. And, and I've kind of got the whole cycle of, of childhood into adulthood happening. All at once. All at once. Yeah. Like, we just have one that got out of diapers. We have one that's getting close to getting out of high school. And we have two in there that are elementary and coming into... Just thug life, dude. Thug life in it. Yeah. Yeah, dude. Yeah, man. I, I get that aspect. My with well, I mean, you as well. You have, you know, we both, we have adults and then we have our little ones still, you know? Yeah, yeah I've, I've got... And the dynamic close. between my son and I is just much different now because he's an adult, you know? Yeah. Like, we... It's like, yeah, he's still my son, and I'm still his dad, but it's like, we hang now, you yeah. know? It's like, we shoot, we shoot the shit about work. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's one of those things where it's like, we just have very different interactions now as opposed to like, hey, dad, let's go to the park. Let's go fucking, you know, with my young ones still. Yeah. So, get the best of both worlds when it comes to that, I guess. You know? Right, right. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, uh, what do you guys think of the uh, Spotify situation? <sighs> Fucking Spotify, dude. So, if you guys don't know about this, there is a um, there was an article that was released, or is it like official policy change or whatever. It is I think it's going to happen soon. Where yeah. <clears throat> so Spotify is going to be changing the way that they do their payouts again, and basically, you need um, a thousand streams for one of your tracks. Yearly, minimal, in right. order to get a payout from them. Yeah. Otherwise, here's the part that I think is kind of weird, is they're like, otherwise we're just going to give it to like all the other billionaires that are ready to fucking That's make the money, part that sucks. Which is weird. They're yeah. like, we're just going to, yeah. we'll just give it to all the top artists is what they're going to do. I, yeah. And like, I, you're tipping your billionaires, bro? What are you doing? Yeah. Like, <laughs> it's, that's, I feel like, I feel like that money should in turn switch over to those artists that are at that bottom of the barrel that yeah. are before that because because let's be honest about that i think i think the a thousand streams that it takes yearly for one of your it says per song yeah. right? right it's not per like album no right because and i don't really think like hitting a thousand for an artist who's independent and maybe they're posting on social media often i feel like that's achievable a thousand streams. I was okay. So, take us for instance. But but okay. that's three dollars. Yeah, it's the it, equivalent of three dollars. Yeah. So if I'm an artist under a thousand streams, three dollars isn't changing my life, right? Yes, but, I, but at but, the same time, and and if I was an artist that was that was under a thousand streams on my song in a year, and that three dollars was going to go to an artist that was at the level above. I would I I feel like I'd be okay with that, but I mean a lot. I mean I guess it's, it would it's get a weird you to, situation. You know. I mean, let's be honest. Spotify fucking mm-hmm. pays ass anyways as it mm-hmm. is. You know what I mean? Um, and, you know they're just. I wish more people use title. 
because title you get a way bigger percentage of the streaming. Right. And also, if you happen to be somebody's top streaming artist of that month, they give you like a five dollar bonus. It's like they give they they they'll pay you a bonus of that month for being somebody's favorite artist that month, hmm. which is really cool. That title does. That's kind of cool. Yeah. yeah. Um. But yeah, dude. I don't know. Just. But I mean, what do you, as an artist, what do you do? Where do exactly. You, where what do you, you do? Do you pull your music off one of the biggest streaming sites that there is, or? Is it going to fucking matter? Do I pull my music off the streaming site, like you said, to get that $3? Yeah. Or is is it worth it for me to keep my music there and have it available for like, say, I make a video that goes viral or something happens where I do get noticed and then everything's easily accessible for that kind of viral thing to happen if it were to. So then the track will still be playable after the thousand streams or whatever, but if you don't meet the thousand streams, you won't get the cut from that, but the track will still be playable? Yeah, yes. it'll, your, okay. your tracks don't go anywhere. It's basically it's just, like if you had 999 streams and you were going to get $3 for that year, your $3 is now going, and I want to say that the dollar amount we're talking about, it's not a small dollar amount. that we're ta- I think I think I heard somewhere... And and I could be wrong, but it's it's in the tens of millions of dollars that we are talking. The pool is huge, right? For oh, this, because think about how many artists, artists. there are on Spotify. Well, that have, but also there's there's also a dollar amount you have to hit and before you could cash out. So being an artist that's making three dollars, the problem I see is that I don't. Even, can you even cash three dollars out as a new artist on like DistroKid? Uh. I think you have to hit like a certain dollar amount before you could actually cash out. So if you're not a musician and you wonder how this shit works, I'll we'll, I'll give you a little bit of insight. This is some straight up truth. We've been streaming since last year on Spotify. It's been a little bit of like a, a little bit over a year. We're luckily luckily we've you know gained a nice enough audience to where we have a couple of thousand on certain tracks and this and that. Yeah, which is you know which we love, but like. Even if you want to consider that a little bit of a success for us stream wise, we haven't cracked a hundred dollars. You right. know what I mean? Yeah, not in streams, yeah. And then think about the minimal amount that Spotify pays out for that, and we're splitting it evenly. Let me say it like this. Like, you know I'll what I mean? You, like, I'll tell you, I'll, I'll <laughs> tell you what, I'll things. tell Spotify this. Take my seventy five fucking dollars and push it to more fucking people. That would be dope. Take it. Fuck it. Yeah. I'll tell you what. If I'm under a thousand streams, take my three fucking dollars and then fucking allow my music pay to, me to fucking, push the algorithm. Right, right. Your pay, algorithm. Pay, yeah. I think the problem is one problem is your algorithm kind of fucking sucks and it yeah. doesn't really support new artists. Yeah. And I think that there's your fucking there's where Spotify should be going, hey, maybe we should try to fucking, you know, put some wind in these people's sales yeah. by but like, you know, I've pitched to Spotify. I've tried, I mean, I think one time we've told them fucking whatever you want to do with this shit, fuck it, you know? You want a shirt? We <laughs> tried, do, yeah, like I think we, yeah, like, I hey, we'll them. give you a shirt if you fucking play us or some shit. Like, we've tried that. We've tried fucking being silly, Dude. funny. We've tried like. Serious. Serious. Yeah. And you just, there's no response and nothing. And because you pitch, you get put onto the radar release thing. Mm. And anybody that likes that genre, it may show up. And that's cool. Did not know that was the reason why we made those playlists like that. That's why that I, th- That's news to me. I didn't yeah. know that. That Because I would always, I would be like, oh, that's cool. We made that playlist. I didn't, I never knew how or why. Yeah. Apparently yeah. it's like a, it's like an incentive for pitching your song. Yeah. Is that's, that what it is? Yeah. yeah. So when you, when you do your pitch, um, just because you do the pitch, it puts you in that pool, I believe, to be in that release radar thing. Mm-hmm. So anybody that, that likes like bands will sh- it could p- potentially show up if they're listening to release radar yeah, or, cool. or something like that. I believe how that works. Somebody get in the comments and correct me if I'm wrong, yeah. but something wrong. Yeah, that's I believe that's what I've heard how it all works, and you know it I, makes sense because I kept wondering how we kept ending up on that. What, what artist actually knows how that system is all actually going? Yeah. And I'll say this, dude. Like you were saying that their algorithm is fucking horrible. It's literally taken over a year for them to start playing bands that actually sound like us in the this is like the last days of war playlist radio type thing that they put us on, you know, 
Because for a while it was like just like some off the wall shit. Like it would yeah, be like nuts. Yeah. So it wasn't even close to what we sounded like. Right. And I was like, well, if this is what they're playing us with randomly, no wonder why it's nobody. That's not pitching it to the correct audience there. Yeah. So you know, uh, yeah. I, I, you know, well, it's one of those things. I hope that there's like a backlash and something comes to like where it favors the artist more. But in the reality, it's just those streaming services have musicians by the balls dude what do you yeah. do oh like what i said i feel like i feel like they could potentially develop a way to for artists and and i feel like they have they have that uh, they had i don't know if they still do but they had a discovery mode type situation where you could turn discovery mode on and there was a certain percentage of those streams a certain percentage of it spotify got for pushing your music and and i feel like uh I think I think you have your answer right there. Mm. You develop ways that, that artists, instead of taking that money, you develop a, a, a system to where you could then take that money, push them as a service, and they're gen- they're taking their money that they're generating, they're putting that towards their advertising. It's it. Yeah, dude. I don't know. I guess there must not be money in it because they're not doing it right. Because <laughs> because that that would be the key is if there was a way to make if that's if they made money doing it, that's exactly how they would be doing it. But that yeah. would be doing the right thing, right? Yeah, for sure, dude. Yeah, and that we don't. Sounds and, like and, the right you know, way. Um, yeah. I used to I used to work at a place where we had a saying, and it was we don't make sense, we make dollars, mm. and there it is. Okay, you know? that sounds about right. Yeah. So like I said, if I was if I was CEO of Spotify, I would kind of think about looking at a way to to do that, to develop a system where where we we solve the problem of of these millions of dollars sitting in a bank account, right? Mm-hmm. Get a way to get artists into part, independent artists to to boost them up and bring them up, you know. Put it this way, I believe it was Slipknot that they some somebody got interviewed. Oh, I think what Corey Taylor was saying, like, yeah, we don't we don't make money off of our fucking streams. That's no. for damn sure. And they're fucking slipknot, dude. How many fucking millions of listeners do they have? I've been to like, a lot <laughs> of slipknot shows. Concert, there's a lot of people there. And there's but yeah, but there's a reason that, that that's where they're making their money. At their shows. That's why they tour so much. That's why they have all sorts of type of merchandise, dude. They're fucking, yeah. their mash that they sell at their show are so expensive, dude. Yeah, uh, it's true. Crazy. They sell a shit ton of them, right? Yeah, and they still do sell yeah. a shit ton of them. Yeah, but, yeah. but I mean, considering the amount, dollar amount that they should be making on their streams, yeah. I'm sure that's pretty damn significant. You Snoop Dogg said he's never seen a dime of it. He doesn't yeah. even know where it goes. Mm. He's like, I don't know where, where my streaming money goes, but I've never seen a dime of it. That's crazy, dude. Yeah. Yeah. Especially um, for an artist that's, had success across so many years to, yeah. for that to be. Yeah. I you guess, know? you know, in the long run, if you weren't going to make, like you said, if it's fucking three bucks for the year, does it really matter for the cost of you still being able to have your music for hopefully other people to find? I'd, you know I'd I mean? give you my $3 so that it got pushed to a few yeah. more people. Yeah, and a few sure. more people could enjoy it. Yeah. You know? Oh, yeah. Fuck it. Fuck Spotify, dude. <laughs> So uh, what do you guys what do you guys think? Have you guys heard this new Beatles song? Uh, so no. I haven't heard the entire Beatles song. So um, did we talk about this on the on a podcast already about how they put it together, or was they, that something we talked about outside? We may have mentioned how they put it together, and briefly they Let's give a quick they, Yeah, they took John Lennon had a recording, and I believe it was on some. This was discussed outside, yeah. not on the podcast. A yeah. Poorly, I, I want to say, and, and what I remember is, it's almost like it was recorded on just a tape cassette, like an old school, you know, tape, and it was John Lennon singing uh, some some lyrics and playing piano, and it almost seemed like he was playing piano, like he was still kind of figuring parts out, you know, and he was like some parts were kind of hummed and. And all that. So what they did was they took that audio and they they pulled the piano out of it. And then they had George Harrison, I believe, somewhere in the 90s track guitar on it. But they didn't have the technology to get the audio to the quality they wanted. So at some point, Ringo Starr 
recorded drums and then I believe they had the technology to remove it and then Paul McCartney came in and did bass and some other vocals. I think he kind of filled in some of the holes at parts and um, yeah, it's just kind of an interesting thing to see uh, a band like that be able to release a song that... So original material from like the 60s or so? Yeah. Before John Lennon was shot and killed, he recorded uh, himself playing uh-huh. on his piano and just singing with a tape recorder, I guess. Yeah. And so they ran the audio through it, some type of well. So they used some sort of AI. There's, stuff to there's, do it, like, I think it's like it's something like La La AI or something like that. They, you could take and pull drums out, and you could isolate tracks and stuff. And it, and it does it. AI does it, and I think it comes in, and I think it takes stuff out and fills in and fills in gaps you know so that I, I remember a lot of people were saying that that it's not a Beatles song because okay. AI came in yeah, and I was I'm kind of like this is John Lennon singing it's and they distract they, they they distracted the piano and all they did is fill in all it does is fill in some of the frequencies they, they basically are, it was a remaster dude like right. they, you know it's, what I mean like it, yeah yeah it was him singing and they pulled the piano out with AI and then they took and the other guys at some point recorded their different parts in a studio. It's but this song wasn't like they were all in a room together and wrote it, but it, it's all the Beatles performing it. Whether they were which takes me to the music video. I haven't seen the music video. And you so were I saying, saw somebody watching the music video on okay. Twitch and they were like reacting to it. It is creepy as shit because it's like the two members that are still alive. And then the other two younger versions that they use like AI to have them like live playing with them. And it's fucking weird, dude. It's just unsettling. Is it creepy? Yes, it's unsettling. I'm going to watch it. Creepy. it is. I'm just like, this is way too weird because they're doing things that you can tell. Either they just completely animated it or they had somebody like in a bodysuit doing it. I don't know. It was, it's un- it's it, like unnatural. It's Yeah, it's just really yeah. weird looking. It's yeah. like... You know, especially because it's like two old dudes. You with know, two young you know. Dudes. I think I think we just highlighted like the clear contrast between AI used in a really cool way that's good and, and AI the tracking just of it, and then the music sucks, video, like, right? Like, what? Like, um, what an amazing thing you could take an artist like John Lennon and get that vocal out and produce it to where it sounds well enough to turn into an actual song you're going to release. And, and then, then and then making a video yeah. with AI that's just garbage. That's, yeah, it's, it's like I said. Weird. It's and it's funny because AI is, is it's it's at that point. I don't know if it's ever going to get away from that where it's just some of it's kind of crazy. But where do you land on the Beatles, Danny? As far as like, do you dig them? Do you? There's a lot of songs that I like about from the Beatles. There's some that I just it does not resonate with me, and I'm just kind of like. This is kind of strange, you know? It's a pretty 50-50 with me as well. Yeah. I've done uh, the Beatles Love Show in Vegas. And, uh, man, all the music that they have on that that whole show is just, it's amazing. Yeah, yeah it's cool. Josh, where do they land with you? <clears throat> I have to admit, I was not really a Beatles fan growing up. But when I met my wife, she kind of turned me on to them. And then, have you ever seen Across the Universe? Yeah. I didn't really care for that movie, but the more I've watched it with her, the more it kind of wore on me. And because of the movie, I started to dive deeper into the songs from the Beatles. And then there's been a lot of old released footage and stuff. I like the older stuff that was not shown before. The rooftop concert that they've had. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That that's older dope. stuff. Yeah. That's cool yeah. to me. Did you see that newer documentary they did on uh, Disney Plus? I what? started to watch that. And I didn't get through, I think, even the second episode. I think I only watched like the first. But it was, I was like I said, that, if you're interested at all, that was the episode I saw. I want to go back and start watching that again because it was really cool. What do you, how do you feel about the Beatles? Were they? Um, for me, there's more of like a, uh, like a sentimental attachment to them as far as just, they were one of my grandmother's favorite bands. Okay. And when I say my grandmother, I mean my grandmother from my dad's second marriage. She was around when I was younger and she was like a big part of my life and she died when I was really young. So when I think of the Beatles, I think of her. So, you know, so it's just like a happy memory type deal thing. As far as musically, like you said, there's stuff that I think, oh, this is pretty rad. And then there's other stuff where it's like, 
whatever drug you guys were on, awesome. Because yeah. I don't get it, you know? Like, yeah. Yeah. So, <laughs> so I grew up on, let's see. So I had, I had my parents, I got whatever they had when high school was going on until they got old enough to not be cool. Like there was a box in the garage of records and we had a record player and those records hung out there. And there were, the Beatles white album was one of them. Uh, I want to say there was a couple of Pink Floyd albums. Um, but yeah, man, those, those were so Beatles. I yeah. listened to it often. Nice. The white album, you know, man. All right, man. Well, I think we can fucking call it quits right here. You guys, this has been the last days of Warcast. Um, thank you so much for checking us out. Subscribe, like the stuff, check out our bios. It's all there. Support the band, support the podcast, buy some merch. We love you. Peace.